kind of sad guys just got out of best buy bought a new memory card and the one that was giving me issue finally corrupted and there's three vlogs in here that is gone i tried recovering it for like five hours yesterday and those files are gone but anyways guys what's going on welcome back to the channel um but i head back home right now i got a package in the mail and i want to spend a little bit more time on the suspension on my sedan before we uh take it to the alignment shop hopefully tomorrow uh is one of my friends available and i want to get the right height settled i was content with it before but I kind of want the front end a little bit lower, just a smidge lower. So we're gonna go tinker with the suspension in a minute. And uh, first I need to get something to eat real quick. So I just got home and got this package right here to repair the dryer. I've repaired this thing about a thousand times now and almost everything in here is brand new and it still works like a charm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fix this real quick. I fixed the dryer and then something else goes out. So uh, this dryer, I don't know how long we've owned it, and I've replaced almost every single thing in this dryer except the motor itself, idler, uh, mechanism, the belt, uh, now the blower fan. I've done the thermostat, the heater element. I've done um, the vent tubes and everything. And uh, I just got it all put back together. It turns on, it runs perfectly. And then it throws a code F22 for thermostat. I checked continuity, I checked all that stuff, and it seems to be working, right? But uh, it turns out that the thermostat was actually separating from the housing, which is throwing off the temperature reading and throwing this code. So more parts ordered, should be in two days, guys. I wanna get going on my car. We are losing the light already, but you know, that's why we have this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my front suspension off and uh, we'll unpackage the package that we got in the mail today. Oh, and also, I want to show you guys my right height. Two finger gap, 24 and an eighth inch from the floor, 24 and a quarter, and then same goes on this side, 24 and a quarter, 24 and an eighth. And uh, I, I, I like my car to be a little rake. I mean, this looks okay, but if I pack stuff in the back, it's gonna slouch. So I wanna drop the front, except the block suspension is already maxed out. That is the lowest we can go. easy also forgot to mention i bought new batteries for my gopro because uh my batteries are pretty beat up that i'm using currently check it out <laughs> this thing has seen better days and on top of that sometimes this thing charged sometimes it doesn't and times that i think it's charging i come and switch out my battery to find it dead so um i mean it still works as long as you make sure the light comes on when you plug it in right but um it's going to be even nicer now to have two extra batteries on deck to ensure we have battery at 100 percent at all times okay so this package right here i bought it and i've shown it before i don't have my razor blade which is crazy here we go got this off of ebay it was like 66 dollars under 70 bucks so this right here our extended top hats and if you're a purist you can get these from like brand name companies um, if you want one that works just as great eBay and I've ran these many a plenty of times before if you guys are OG you guys probably remember that I used to make these out of stock top hats per the Honda Tech days of DIY extended top hats and look at this sticker literally says well, I guess it was supposed to be a transfer sticker because on the inside it says made. And then right here it says in. And then it says China. <laughs> well, anyways, um, I'm going to use this to um, still keep my shock travel. 
and preload, but giving me the option to drop the coilover another inch and inch and a quarter. I have these same extended top hats in the H2B CRX and the front ride height was looking like this, right? And I wanted to be a little bit lower. We were maxed out on the block super streets and got these extended top hats to be able to still have my shock travel, um, still have my preload, but allow me to drop it much more lower. So you can see we have a finger gap and I'm sure I have more space to uh, bring it more lower, but this is an H car and the pants is really low already. So I'm hoping that we can achieve the same ride height here on the sedan and I don't think I'm going to be installing these in the rear because the rear has a lot of adjustability already but uh, we're going to have to adjust the rear once more when the S1 all-wheel drive billet forks show up because we need those forks to clear axles and then we're going to have to adjust the right height again but for now for today we're just going to do the front because the front is my main concern because I'm already content with how the back of the car looks, but I'm gonna go ahead and get some tools and get this installed onto my blocks coilovers. So I'm gonna measure my height of the preload, right? So we are at eight and one eighth. And then on the other one, eight, a little, a little bit more than one eighth. I don't know, that's three sixteenths, eight three sixteenths. And uh, the right height is the same on left and right side. But look at the look at the thread difference. You guys see how much more it is over here than it is over here? The Honda chassis would be weird sometimes, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna break the preload loose before I take off the top hat. Just so we can loosen up some tension. Okay, now the only thing between running the uh, blocks versus the eBay one is the bushing is pretty doo-doo. Uh, it's like hard like a rock. Kind of want to change it out, but uh, I don't know if these will fit. Definitely not using the bump stops. So we got the bushings out. I'm going to go ahead and put it on here. I mean, it's pretty snugged. Pretty snugged. Okay. That is going to work. All right. I'm gonna bring the preload down a little bit and then see where this hat lands. Okay, we need to go a lot down. Okay. I'm going to thread the body up until we get about a quarter inch. That right there is a quarter inch. And then I'm going to put the nut on. Everybody does this differently. This has always worked for me. Right? So I'm going to thread the nut until it butts up with the washer. Right? And then I'm going to preload this. Right? So there's no gap between the hat and the bottom perch. The spring does not move. I'm not going to lock it in place yet, and now I'm going to go ahead and shoot this down. And what it's going to do is, um, when we are threading the rest of the way of the shaft, it's going to compress the spring. Now, if you want this to be ultra stiff, you can tighten the preload like crazy. But uh, we're going to be dailing this car in a sense of, um, you know. But because we're going to be driving this car as often, we're not going to try to like make it ultra stiff because this is already the drag series callovers. Already has stiff spring rates, so I'm going to go ahead and just yak this down that's bottomed out we don't need to go any further and now the spring is pretty loaded on there um I'm, i don't think i'm gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna preload this anymore so i'm just gonna go ahead and lock this into place all right so let me show you guys the difference now. With this one untouched to the bottom of the cup, we are 12 and a half. And then now with the extended top hat, we are 11 and three quarter. So almost one inch um, lower from just switching the top hats. You guys see this? 
big difference, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side here, match it all up with the preload and everything, get it back into the car, and then start adjusting our ride height. Damn it, I forgot this. And because we're using the eBay extended top hats, they are threaded for the Honda 14 millimeter nuts. And that means I can use my Downstar um, nuts for the beauty washers because the blocks was specific to its own and I had to shave it down in order to fit the beauty washer. So now we can use the matching one. These spindles are so damn heavy, I can't even pick it back up to line up my fork. So, with the little cyst of the jack, I think we should be okay. Somebody commented and said, how do I protect the battery from like say driving in the rain, water splashing onto the electrical. Uh, I wanna put fender lining in here because my car's not gonna be low enough to scrape it off, but I don't have any EF sedan fender lining. I do have a CRX one. I don't know if it fits. Maybe I'll go grab it in the backyard if I still have it and test fit it. Got a package from the homie Automotive Anatomy and S1 built. I've never had an issue adjusting my ride height before uh, until this car. This thing, I spent two hours trying to adjust my front ride height to where I want it to be, and I just can't seem to get it there. So where it's currently sitting at now, I'm content with it. And uh, I did break my measuring tape, but you know, still functioning. So let me show you guys real quick where we are currently sitting at. No matter how much I adjusted the left and the right, the right and the left to get it to be the same, it kept going off far apart from each other so the rear of the car we're sitting at 24 and a half 24 and a half evenly on the passenger and the driver and the front i was trying to get it to be 23 and a half but like i said every time i adjusted one side to match it it would change this side every time i adjust this side it would change the other side so off camera i took it off readjusted it to be equal again and start over and um after adjusting the driver's side a couple of times passenger side a couple of times we finally got it to be even at 24 so half an inch higher in the rear which is okay it's a little stiff on the spring but you know when i load it up it shouldn't squat too much we are 24 in the front right here as well too and again 24 and a half in the back so the only thing is to my eyes it just looks way too even when I'm standing from afar, but realistically, it's still half an inch taller in the rear. So I'm gonna have to deal with it. It looks it looks good. I, I mean, you know, with it being a little higher in the front, I guess it's beneficial as far as oil pan clearance. I measured the oil pan to the floor. We are at three and a half before going to 24. I'm sure I have about four inches of clearance now. So 
we didn't make it to the alignment shop, obviously, right? And uh, I, I guess, I guess I want to do one more thing before um, we really button up the suspension. You guys saw the S1 package. We have something in there that needs to be installed. Okay, so this, this is frustrating. The part came in today to fix that code and it didn't fix that code. I'll deal with the dryer after this video, but let's go ahead and grab the items we need out of the S1 box. Cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. This is one box out of a couple that's on the way. This box should have the billet forks that I'm gonna need for the rear pullover system. I may as well get it installed now just so we can get the right height set to do the alignment. And then when we do the all-wheel drive stuff, I don't have to touch any of that um, when we get to it. So uh, this right here hopefully is the right cup for the blocks threads. And uh, also in part of this package is my new rear axles from S1 for the wagon rear differential. I'm not gonna open it now, but I will tell you that this thing feels beefy. So I have two of them right here, right? And we also have a key tag right here and also their little like, I guess, business card. If you guys are interested in any S1 products, man, be sure to hit the link in the description below and use the discount code provided to save 10% off. Right here is their social media. It's practically S1 built on everything. So be sure to give them a follow as well. This is the billet fork, coilover specific, that uh, you need to clear the axle, which is gonna go through about right there. So uh, when you order this, make sure you select on the drop down menu what coilover system you have to ensure that the threads are going to clamp uh, perfectly to your coilover. So uh, I selected Blocks Drag Competition, and I'm hoping that it's the same for the one that's in my car because I do have the newer version of the Blocks Drag. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the car jacked up, pull everything off, and plop this on All right, guys, so I think I have the wrong sleeves because we are bottomed out and still pretty loose. Okay, well, nothing we can do about it now, guys. I'm going to go ahead and just put my stock suspension back on and wrap this up. Man, what a runaround this video was. I ain't going to lie to you guys, but... Um, we're making progress. We're making progress. I could technically take the car to the alignment shop the way it is and then when I do the billet forks uh, Adjust it back to where the height was and it shouldn't really alter the alignment At all really to be honest with you, but um, I'm just I'm just happy that we finally got the right height even all around and uh, I'm content with the height because like I said the positive side of things of it being uh, not where I need it to be higher we get the ground clearance for the oil pan because I went under there and the oil pan had already been uh, Hitting something because you can see the fresh scrape that's on it. That wasn't on there before Honestly since the dino day man everything has kind of just been all over the place and Somebody had mentioned like yo static you look stressed out I really am because a lot of things has not gone my way and I've just been kind of like losing a little motivation here There there and here uh, but the last couple of days before going to sleep I've been binge watching a lot of my older videos and when we were actually out and about and enjoying the cars and just kind of built a little motivation to get out here and um, put some more work into the car because we're close, man. We're, we are close. Aside from waiting for all the all-wheel drive stuff, this thing just really needs alignment and the tune. And I can literally go and enjoy this car somewhere and uh, spend tire for days. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to get back into the groove here in the garage and... The billet forks, I already talked to my Lynn from S1. They're gonna be sending me the correct ones. I'll send these back and then hopefully we can, um, you know, install that. Probably since I got to take the car to alignment sooner than the um, 
sleeves coming in i'm probably just going to do it when i do the entire all-wheel drive system and that is still um a package we are waiting for so at the end of the day progress is better than no progress guys i've been thinking of like starting the body work because like i've been spending numerous and numerous of hours on like wrapping 101 um do's and don'ts for wrapping uh wrapping for beginners and things like that and the more and more i stare at this door handle the more i'm like anxious to get going on the wrap so if we are needing to do some things in between waiting on parts or waiting for our alignment schedules or dyno tune schedules and stuff i'll probably just end up start start doing the body work uh really there's not a lot of major dents other than the roof um it shouldn't take long to like really get all of the um panels nice and straight and prep for some vinyl wrapping so I don't know. Well, we might chip a little bit at that this upcoming week. So before I wrap up this video, I'm going to open this last package sent over from the homie Gus at Automotive Anatomy. My boy out here with the uh, Christmas theme plaid um, packaging right here. I push everything down to the bottom and cut towards you guys this time and away from myself. Look at that. Butter. We have another t-shirt right here and... Man, the quality of this t-shirt feels really nice. Oh, this one's cool. Service Manual Volume 1 Automotive Anatomy. Oh, uh, yeah. We got the logo right in the back. Shout out to the homie Gus from Automotive Anatomy. Thank you for sending care packages randomly. And I truly do appreciate it. And... This one is the right size this time. So you're definitely going to see me rocking this one because the other ones are 2XL. And you know what I'm saying? It makes me feel a little buff when I wear it. But this one, definitely going to be rocking this one soon. I appreciate you, Gus. Give him a follow. Link in the description below. Automotive Anatomy got some sick-ass content and some coverages of events and um, people's cars. He did one of my cars as well, too, a couple years ago. And that one was a banger. I hope you guys enjoyed the progress update on the EF sedan. If you guys did, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for more progress update, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.